News. I'm Sweeney Gray. Today we're going to take another look at the fashion industry. So to help me on that conversation, I have the general manager of Fashion TT, Lisa Daniel Charles, to my immediate left. And then to her left, I have the chairman of Fashion TT, Jason Lindsay. Thank you and welcome for joining us. <laughs> Thanks. That's yeah. very nice. So I just wanted to start with a really, really basic question because I know Fashion TT is one of the special interest groups that the government has created to focus on the creative industries. Obviously, you all are focusing on fashion. Um, talk to me about what Fashion TT is actually supposed to do. Okay. Well, I'll start off by saying what the mandate of Fashion TT is. The mandate of Fashion TT is essentially to stimulate the business development and the export activity of the Trinidad and Tobago fashion industry. That being, we are here to build the capacity of designers so that they'll be able to fulfill orders on a local level as well as on an international level. So what you found is that over the last year and coming up to the coming year, essentially we're going to have a series of programs and we had a series of programs in terms of capacity building workshops, we had an inward buyer mission whereby, whereby we brought in buyers from the French Caribbean to attract exports. Um, and what you'd find now is that this year we're launching our value chain investment program, which is a very comprehensive program, and it's the milestone program of the strategic plan, whereby there are several tiers by which designers on different levels will be mentored and trained. So this year, we are mentoring and training those designers who are on the non-global level, which essentially means that you need help in-house with respect to tweaking your fashion value chain. And we'll be bringing in an international fashion consultant to come in and help those designers. So those designers have already been selected. Mm -hmm. And we hope to start that within January, February in 2017. And of course, we have the local production facility, which yeah. is another big one for us this year that we hope to launch within the third quarter of this fiscal, perhaps maybe within in June or so, May, June. Yeah. Um, that's what we're doing, and we're hoping, you know, that this facility, and it will help designers to be able to fulfill their orders in a more efficient manner locally as well as globally. Because I know I've done one or two interviews with different designers, mm -hmm. and they have all expressed a need for a production facility. This is difficult to get people to produce their, clo their clothing at a, you know, a, a convenient and a regular mm -hmm. basis, and mm -hmm. that's one of the challenges. You know, so um, I know there's been some, con talk to me about how you'll envision the, the garment production facility, how it's supposed to, you know, set up and run. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll start it from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the first, I would say, government initiative with mm -hmm. respect to launching such a, yeah. a facility. So what we did is we said, okay, let's put together a business model, a proper business plan that is orchestrated and, and properly prepared by someone who has the experience in operating facilities like this mm -hmm. on a worldwide level. Um, the consultant who was successfully selected is a, a gentleman named Raymond Wong. Right. He operates facilities in New York and in China, so he's well okay. versed in this okay, thing. Okay. The business model is currently right now being, um, you know, it's currently in the consultation stage with mm -hmm. stakeholders. Um, just two Fridays ago, we sat down with stakeholders and the various associations and sister stakeholder companies with respect to discussing the draft and what necessary inclusions or issues they have with the draft. So that's where we are right now. Um, really and truly, what we envision for this facility is that you know we want to launch a facility this year. We want to have labor within the facility to support designers, whereby designers come in, um, pay for their labor, get um, their garments manufactured within a quick time frame so that they're able to fulfill orders in a timely manner because right now that is the issue right now in terms of the fulfillment of orders and how long it takes. So the management of the facility is not set and still you're still exactly. meeting with stakeholders. Exactly. So that's right. where I'm no but that's where I'm gonna come to. Mm -hmm. You see the purpose of this business model and Jason is here to correct mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Purpose of this business model is to put together a firm foundation by which this facility will be run. Right. Right? This facility is not gonna be government owned after three years. Mm -hmm. The purpose of the business model is to make this facility a self sustainable one. Right. Right. You understand? Mm -hmm. So there are projections within the business model with respect to how it's going to run over the three-year period. And by the end of the three years, it will show that this model will be self-sustainable. And you know, 
after that, then you know we can look at different ownership structures. But at this point in time, let's put the foundation in place. Right. Let's put an efficient business model in place. It has never been done before. We don't have that now in Trinidad and Tobago. So mm -hmm. let's put the structure in place for our stakeholders. Let's make sure that it runs efficiently and it funds itself efficiently. And then thereafter, let's look at in whose hands it goes to in terms of I'm really glad sector. you said that because I know that was one of the criticisms that came to me after mm -hmm. um, I actually got to interview Raymond mm -hmm. about the facility that, you know, th there's a suggestion that it be an owner owned and managed sort of facility. Yeah, and I heard criticisms in terms of this is going to be a government owned facility and a mm. government administered facility, but that is not what it speaks to in mm. the business model. It speaks to that the government will will launch it, put things in place to ensure that it's self-sustainable over a period of time, the incubation period, and then thereafter it's going to go back into the hands of private. Yeah. Let me bring Jason into the conversation because, you know, Lisa and I mm. just started talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, and, and uh, we were talking earlier about, you know, the chairmanship of mm -hmm. Fashion mm -hmm. TT and you said it was a bit stressful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How are you finding the stakeholder engagement? Well, I mean, this is the first time that the government has ever um, looked at fashion as an industry which they can support, which they can sort of test the viability of and see what sort of, you know, how they can use that as part of the greater creative industries to sort of diversify the economy. Um, we've had a long history in fashion. Um, uh, that's no secret. I mm -hmm. think the only difference now is that this is just trying to coordinate the industry in a way where we could sort of generate a lot more value out of it take some of the lessons of the designers that have um, done well and have become icons locally in the Caribbean and then see how we can sort of create a model using that, incorporating the newer programs and newer designers to sort of show a, bl a, br a blueprint mm -hmm. for how we're going to go forward. Um, when we first, how Fashion TT um, came into being is originally the state had put together through the Ministry of Trade at the time a committee to really look at a strategic plan for the industry mm -hmm. um, and that was done and you know that was done with um, uh, you know led by some consultants with, with engagement of all the practitioners in the industry and the agencies and the other support groups and it sort of turned the lights on uh, in a lot of areas a lot of areas where we have deficiencies why we have deficiencies how the industry has changed uh, the impact of China um, and the you know the World Trade Organization making changes, so that sort of uh, set the um, stage for how we to go forward. Mm -hmm. These initiatives and the ones that Lisa mentioned are now all that are coming out of that study. Right. So we are really actioning the plan. Um, what it showed is that there, are, I mean, and this would have been known mm -hmm. in the community, is that we have both demand side and supply side deficiencies that mm -hmm. uh, you know allow us to uh, be creative but it doesn't really allow us to really you know get the true potential out of the industry as we could and we've been trying to address some of those so for example uh, accessing markets was a I was, I was about to ask <coughs> yeah. what were some of the other deficiencies um it's both demand and supply so access to markets um on one side and, and production was a big issue uh, not so much, um, not just made in Trinidad and locally produced, mm -hmm. but any design of any type, getting it produced um, anywhere in a way that is done with that Caribbean or, you know, how the, how the designers want it done. Mm -hmm. That is not something that has been accessible for the designers. Some designers are producing abroad and have the ability to, to get that done, but to a large extent, a lot of them don't have that. So. Really, that's what we're trying to do now, strengthen both sides. So they had some initiatives that we did last year where we try to find nearer, sure uh, production options mm -hmm. um, that can produce in smaller quantities and that sort of have, a, um, you know, that we could relate to in the Caribbean. Right. And those would have been within the wider Caribbean as well as in South America. Uh, like Colombia, I mean, options we looked at was Colombia, Haiti, Central America. So that we can use their production correct, facilities correct, to make correct, stuff. Correct, correct. So mm -hmm. we can do, and, and in more digestible quantities. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. you go to the Far East and you have to produce in very large numbers. Yeah, which would make sense for Caribbean yeah, designers exactly, exactly. who are c catering for Caribbean markets. Exactly. Right. And on the demand side, again, is access to market. So yeah. even if we're 
to produce. I mean, who do we sell to? How do we go through fulfilling orders? I mean, there's a whole there's a whole pipeline of areas that we need to support our designers in terms of being able to access the markets. There's over and above sending them to a fashion show in New York or something else. Like well, that. yeah, because yeah, I yeah. actually was talking to a designer on Saturday because I got to attend the Afrofunk fashion show. Mm -hmm. Really, mm -hmm. really lovely mm -hmm. pieces. Um, amazing presentation. But I was talking to another designer who said she was invited to show at Paris Fashion Week mm -hmm. and she had to decline and she's like, I'm not stupid. I know I can't, even if you all love this stuff, because mm -hmm. they kept begging her, I can't supply. I don't have a production facility Correct. that can. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so and that's what we try to do. We try to, I mean, on one hand, you can't uh, put all the supply elements in place and just, you know, put a huge investment in and yeah. only after we to, to serve, because people need to do business now. So we've been trying, you know, with the guidance city plan, to develop both hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So Lisa mentioned um, the globe, um, the value chain, value chain both mm -hmm. global and non-global, yeah. um, is to help us access and supply the local and the regional markets at the same time as we develop our capacity for more global um, markets. Because it's very, it's very export focused. That's re in reality, that's the correct, focus of Fashion correct. TT. It's not just about developing the industry for internal um, consumers, but we're looking at making enough clothes to export to exactly. the Caribbean primarily, and then wider. Like wh when you say export, what markets are you all thinking of? Uh, that you think that will have interest in Caribbean yeah, re fashion? Regional and international. I mean, I think that. Um, so, uh, you know, as part of the mandate of trade, it mm -hmm. is really at, at its core. I think is really to generate trade, generate mm -hmm. act, um, economic activity, revenue. Now that could happen local and internationally. But, the, but the what truth international is, markets do you think, like your research is telling you, are uh, attuned to Caribbean designers, you're well, thinking? I think that what the plan identifies first and foremost is what it is, what are we selling? What it is that we have to offer the world what is that the is unique. Aesthetic? Yeah. yeah, so before we decide, who we selling to? Let's try to figure out what are we selling mm -hmm. or what do we say about what we sell. So that I think that is one of the milestones in the plan and is mm -hmm. I think the general direction is that we are uh, selling a, a brand, a Caribbean brand. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? With the colors, with the flavors, everything that um, immediately when you think of, of the Caribbean, to anybody in the world, you know, there's a certain sense of imagery that comes to you that comes to mind, mm -hmm. and it comes out in what we wear yeah. and how we speak and what we do, and that's what we sell and just articulated in, in mm -hmm. apparel and fashion, that sort of thing, um, and that's what we had to define. That's how we had to be clear in our heads. Once we are not the fashion, because we explored a number of options mm -hmm. of what we're selling. Yeah. So, for example, um, Trinidadian fashion, for example is not something that somebody, let's say, in Estonia may be able to immediately identify. But Caribbean, they can. So that's the first part of it. Now, once we uh, identify that, then we look at the markets. We have um, the regional markets um, where a lot more functionality would apply in terms of the consumption. We have the diaspora markets where the, you know, who missing home and yeah. who wants to connect would apply. So you get to wear a little bit of your of course, uh, something of from home out in public. Yeah. A very big market. Uh -huh. And then ideally where we ultimately want to go and where is an uh, area that, you know, in some extent has been neglected in the past, are those international markets who are very exotic too. You know, some of the cooler climates, some of the climates and some of the regions that we are completely alien to, we become exotic. Mm -hmm. um, so each of those have, has a different strategy. And uh, um, the approach is that as the designers go out there and access those markets is done very differently. But before we even get to that stage, we have to, as you were just saying with the Afrofunk experience and the <laughs> Paris experience, there's so much that needs to be put in place. Yeah. It would almost be putting our uh, designers uh, in logic center at disadvantage, just putting them in front of those, exactly as you said. Well, before. I know um, we, our designers are extremely creative. Mm -hmm. Because you know you could just spend hours just looking at local fashion. I mean, Charlotte and Das just had her fashion show mm -hmm. on Sunday, mm -hmm. and some of those pieces are really stunning and mm -hmm. amazing. I was complaining, fake complaining to a friend that it's going to be very difficult to try and save, mm -hmm. you know, with the amount of fabulous things that I absolutely need to put in my wardrobe, mm -hmm. right? But 
they're creative, but are they good at business? Is business one of um, bus building business capacity of the individual designers one of the concerns of Fashion TT? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that uh, again, you remember this is um, a mandate, as Lisa mentioned, mm -hmm. that is under trade. It's mm -hmm. not under culture. You know, it's not under tourism. It's under trade. The underlying, right. the core of it is to facilitate trade, to, to facilitate economic um, activity, to diversify the economy. So that's an essential part of it. Mm -hmm. um, the steps that we took thus far is understanding the industry locally, regionally, understanding what we need to be able to to trade internationally. But yes, I mean that is that's the core part of it: training designers, and not just that, because you remember now the UTT. Um, Caribbean Academy of Fashion Design. They don't only focus on design, they focus on fashion management. Business and some of fashion. Of them, yeah, correct. We just have to find a way now to take those graduates, and I know some of them already doing it, mm -hmm. and, you know, getting them involved and getting them. Isn't that what the Value Chain Investor Program does? Exactly. So the Value Chain Investment Program mm -hmm. is about the business of fashion. Mm -hmm. Essentially, fashion TT's whole mandate is essentially the business of fashion, ensuring that designers have the capacity in order to run their business efficiently mm -hmm. to fulfill orders locally and export. Mm -hmm. That's really and truly mm -hmm. the, the whole cornerstone of our strategic plan and what we're doing, you know. Um, you know, we have institutions like UTT and YTEP that deal with design, mm -hmm. but Fashion TT is finding an avenue and looking at avenues by which to train our designers and ensure that they're able to run their business, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. Um, I know I want to just go back to the production mm -hmm. facility really, really side because sure. yeah, clearly it's there's you're seeing the stakeholder involvement because when I spoke to him about two months ago, he was talking about launching it in April and I was like, that's kind of quick, mm -hmm. you know, but I guess you'll have um, your one of the things that we always, mm -hmm. one of the challenges we always deal with in Trinidad is that we have big plans, but we don't always put them in place. So I guess <coughs> you're under a lot of pr um, pressure to implement some of these things as soon as possible so that people can see what you all are planning to do and see maybe see how it works? Is that a challenge? Yeah, well, I mean, you, you guys mentioned it earlier, mm -hmm. is that when you ask, you know, what is, when we, we still establishing uh, to some extent that relationship with the stakeholders. Right. Who have been here long before us, you know, quite frankly. So, I mean, it takes a lot of time to get the stakeholders on board, mm -hmm. you know, should I, you know, convince them that, you know, we, we, we've taken steps to incorporate everybody to do it in the right way. Mm -hmm. So we have to move. We have yeah. to move because you don't ever want to lose your, you know, your clients. Mm -hmm. you know? So the fashion practitioners are our clients. Mm -hmm. So we cannot put plans in place to implement in two years' time because, I mean, some designers are experienced, but the others will not survive for two, three years, so yeah. we have to move very fast. Now the non, the, the, the production facility is, is more connected with the local and regional uh, orders. Right. And I mean, the idea is that it will give those designers a chance. I mean, even when Christmas season comes around, mm -hmm. you know, some of these smaller, unique designers struggle to fulfill very small orders, mm -hmm. you know, because they may not be as established. You don't have two or three uh, people working for them. They they're under significant pressure. So for very small numbers, but is 10 different people with very small orders. Mm -hmm. So the garment facility will help with some of that. That's not its primary uh, purpose, of course. Mm -hmm. The primary purpose is more towards consistency of production. Mm -hmm. um, it is also meant to, so our, um, when talking about a strategic plan, our, um, the area that we're focusing on in terms of our, value proposition is the creativity, is the design. Mm -hmm. It's not the production. You really? know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Where, I, I mean, we see it. When you get here, people I was, say. I was thinking creativity, we're fine. Well, no, it's like, wise. Cre like, we're fine. You no, know, but we're very good. We're not <laughs> yeah. just fine. We're very what good. We, what we, we're missing is, is, is um, sustainability and quality control mm -hmm. and mass production. Correct. Mm -hmm. But in terms of what we have to sell the world, mm -hmm. it is our creativity. You yeah. know what I mean? We're not selling here garments, like for example, the Italians, mm -hmm. you know, are known for their production, perhaps. Yeah. We, we're not going in to compete. We can't. In, exactly. We, we can't have, compete we, we in can't mass compete. in China. Yeah. So what we have 
what is our value pr proposition is our design, yeah. right? That is what we focus on, that's what we sell in the world. But we have to produce it, you know, mm -hmm. we have to understand, not just produce it, understand how it's produced, have but then we have to focus more, a lot on um, branding and, and public relations, like correct, get people correct. to understand there is a Caribbean aesthetic, so we have to be able to explain it and promote it and make that a value. So it's like, you know, Swiss watches are supposed to be the best watches mm -hmm. in the world and French wine. And even sometimes you taste any French, French wine and you have this great expectation that it's going to be the best wine you've ever tasted in your life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that alone can make you buy in. Of we course. need to do something similar for... For the creativity. Right. But we, you know, so what I'm, I say that to say that the production is... Because we always focus on the creativity, mm -hmm. we almost don't focus on the production side of it. Yeah. So what the, the facility is supposed to generate, those help us with our consistency, mm -hmm. our standards, our timeliness. It puts the systems in place to allow us to do those things that typically we're not known for doing well. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? There's no question on the creativity. No, you know, when I get this shirt or you get that dress, you have to know you can go back next year and get the same dress and the same size. Yeah. So it, it sort of puts some structure mm -hmm. in that which is missing yeah. and to serve, you know, by extension, the local and regional markets and help the designers just, you know, do what they do best. Obviously, some of the stakeholders, that, I mean, we, when I think fashion, TT, I and all have a bias and keep talking about designers, but mm -hmm. clearly, if you're doing a production facility, you have to be talking about the technicians as well, the cutters and the sewers, and that. what have they been telling you they want for the facility? You know, um, what, what, what kind of feedback have they been giving you when you're doing your stakeholder engagement? Well, I mean, Lisa and mm -hmm. we the stakeholder, just something I want to mention, but this is not a Fashion TT project. Okay. Right? This is a project with Fashion TT in partnership with UTT, as mm -hmm. well as um, YTEP, mm -hmm. um, ECCL. Right. ECCL. Mm -hmm. so, so you have those agencies that come together to partner mm -hmm. um, doing this project. Okay. On the other side, you also have uh, what would be representative bodies like FAT Fashion Association. Right. You have Which FET. is the funniest acronym for a fashion association I ever. I, I, I cheer. I'm the chair of FAT. Um, I make that joke all the time, but yeah, it is. <laughs> so we also have FET, which is the uh, Fashion Entrepreneurs of Trent and Tobago. Uh -huh. um, we have a lot of stakeholder and other smaller stakeholder groups that represent maybe a wider membership or, mm -hmm. or, or parts of the industry. So we rarely, of the four partners executing the project, there was a wider steering committee that sort of put things in place. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for something like this, you cannot engage every single stakeholder. No. You know what I mean? So we try to get the representative bodies, create a steering committee, and they're the ones that guided us in terms of... So even though we have a consultant, they're the ones that guided us and, okay, what do fashion designers you think they will require, what their outlook will be? Mm -hmm. um, FET represents a lot of the uh, producers and the seamstresses and whatnot. Um, so they have, a, they have an idea and a context of what may be relevant. Some of the designers actually do both. So they have people producing so they could guide it. So really the steering committee, I mean, the idea provokes it. Everybody needs to provoke it, provoke it at that level mm -hmm. and steers it. Mm -hmm. um, led by, of course, the consultant and, and the agencies that come together. So no doubt there'll be deficiencies, but that's why you have like a YTEP involved. Mm -hmm. That's why you have um, UTT. UTT. Mm -hmm. um, and UTT. UTT, they're both on the business development side as well as the Caribbean Acash uh, Academy of Fashion Design. Yeah. Um, ECCL, um, which is Export Centers. Mm -hmm. Export Centers, Company Limited. Company Limited. They have facilities throughout the country mm -hmm. that, have, that we use and we're actually looking at those facilities our options. Um, so really, really quickly, because mm -hmm. we have to wrap, because <sighs> the conversation just goes on. Um, who are you wearing? Who am I wearing? Yeah. Oh, I'm wearing a, a batik shirt by Tina Designs. <laughs> and you are? I'm wearing a kai dress from Mailing. Which goes to show how much um, faith you all have in the local fashion yeah, industry. So it's really it lovely <laughs> to see that. So thank you so much, Lisa and Jason, for joining us. Sure. That's it for Conversations with C News. I'm Suna Gray. See us next time.